Throughout history, human beings have created extremely cruel torture devices designed to cause huge pain. While some of these devices were designed to face a slow, painful death, many inflicted so much pain and left such damage that the victims died of blood loss or infections. Many torture methods and contractions, like the head crushers, breast ripper, or crocodile shears, which were designed to deform the victim but ended up killing the victim. But many torture devices left the victim to deal with lifelong agony and deformity. Hello everyone, this is the Top You channel. Let us take a look at cruel torture devices designed to cause huge pain. Number 15, Scold's Bridle. A scold's bridle was an instrument of punishment as a form of public humiliation. It was an iron muzzle in an iron framework that enclosed the head, although some bridles were masks that depicted suffering. 16th century Scotland and England used scold's bridle on women considered as witches, shrews or scolds, particularly for public humiliation. It was an iron mask which attached to a helmet. The contraption was attached to the head of the woman, and the bridle bit, which measured two inch long and one inch wide, and was studded with spikes, would be inserted into the mouth. It functioned to silence the wearer from speaking entirely, and caused extreme pain and physiological trauma to scare and intimidate the wearer into submission. The scold's bridle was overwhelmingly used on women, often at the request of husbands or other family members. This prevented speaking and resulted in many unpleasant side effects for the wearer, including excessive salivation and fatigue in the mouth. For extra humiliation, a bell could also be attached to draw in crowds. The wearer was then led around town by a leash. Number 14, Tongue Tearer. A tongue tearer looked like an extra large pair of scissors. It was used to cut off the tongue of the victim without any effort. The tongue tearer, also known as the scissors of the holy martyrs, was a torture device used in the past to punish those who spoke out against the church or committed blasphemy. The device consisted of a pair of large, iron scissors with sharp, pointed blades. The mouth of the victim would first be forced open using a device called a mouth opener. After that the tongue tearer, made of iron, would be used to firmly clasp his tongue with the rough grippers of the device. The tongue of the person being tortured would then be twitched uncomfortably. Then, after tightening the screw, tongue would be torn out roughly. The tongue tearer was designed to cause extreme pain and suffering, as well as to silence dissenting voices. It was often used during the Spanish Inquisition and other religious persecutions as a means of punishing heretics and suppressing religious freedom. Number 13, Lead Sprinkler. A lead sprinkler was one of the cruel torture devices designed to cause huge pain. The device was usually filled with molten lead, though other liquids such as tar, boiling oil, water, etc., were also used, at high temperature, which could severely scald skin. The victim was tortured using this device by dripping the hot and burning content onto the stomach or other parts of the body, including the eyes. Even molten silver would be poured on the victim's eyes, to produce the most fatal effects. The lead sprinkler was used as a punishment for various crimes, including heresy, blasphemy, and treason. It was often used in public executions as a way to intimidate and terrify onlookers. Number 12, Knee Splitter. Knee splitters were employed in the 12th century, during the Inquisition. The device consisted of two large iron blocks that were connected by screws or wedges. It was designed to inflict extreme pain on a victim by crushing the knee joint. The number of spikes ranged from 3 to 20, and depended on the gravity of the crime committed by the person being punished. The victim's knee was placed between the blocks, and the screws or wedges were then tightened, crushing the joint and causing intense pain. These spikes are driven into the flesh of the victim, and once the spikes are embedded into the victim's leg, the blocks are drawn closer to each other using two large screws to slowly pulverize the knee, just as the device's name suggests. The use of torture devices such as the knee splitter was a barbaric and cruel practice that was often used to extract confessions or information from individuals. Number 11, Thumb Screws. 
the ithom screws, or rapillowix, were a type of torture device used during the medieval period in Europe. They were designed to cause extreme pain to the victim by crushing their fingers or thumbs. The device consisted of two flat metal plates with a screw mechanism that, when turned, would gradually tighten around the finger or thumb placed between them. As the screws tightened, the victim would experience excruciating pain, and the pressure could eventually result in the dislocation or even the amputation of the digit. Thumb screws were often used as a means of extracting confessions or information from individuals and they were a popular tool of the Inquisition. Weirdly, during Renaissance eras of England, these were used to straighten and elongate a woman's fingers, to make them elegant. Number 10, Heretic's Fork Slash Neck Torture Heretic's fork was metal device with two bipronged forks attached to a belt strapped round the victim's neck, with one fork pointed to the chin and the other to the sternum while the victim remained suspended. When the victim was forced to wear the heretic's fork, they would be unable to move their head or neck without experiencing extreme pain from the sharp prongs digging into their skin. The device was designed to prevent the victim from sleeping or lying down and would cause them to be in a constant state of discomfort. The neck torture worked similarly, with a metal or wooden device studded with spikes around the victim's neck preventing eating, lying down, or any other activity. The heretic's fork was often used as a means of extracting confessions or information from individuals accused of heresy. Number 9, Scavenger's Daughter The scavenger's daughter was a type of torture device that was introduced during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I's father, King Henry VIII, also called Skeffington's Jives, invented by a Brit named Skevington, against Protestants accused of treason. The apparatus had an iron hoop. It was designed to compress the victim's body into a compact space, causing immense pain and discomfort. The device consisted of an iron hoop with two hinges and a series of diagonal iron bars. The victim's body would be forced into the hoop and the bars would be tightened, compressing the victim's body and causing the spine to bend unnaturally. This would eventually crack the victim's ribs and breastbone and dislocate the spine. It could even lead to bleeding from fingertips and face. While it is possible that the scavenger's daughter was used during Queen Elizabeth I's reign, there is no definitive evidence to support this claim. Number 8, Rack, Horse, Strapado. The rack, used in Europe, came in many forms, like the horse. The Iraq was a torture device that was used in Europe during the medieval period and beyond. It came in many forms with the most common type consisting of a wooden frame with rollers at either end basically, the victim would be tied down, as a mechanical device, tighten the rope to dislocate the joints, often long enough to tear the limbs off. In case of a horse, the victim was to the top of a beam, i.e., horseback, facing up, while, pulleys below tightened the ropes. The strapado, used in Palestine, does not have a base for the body to lie on, but the tied arms were wrenched out of the joints of the hanging prisoner. Abroad, in ancient China, there is a similar torture, riding the wooden donkey. The punishment of riding the wooden donkey was a form of humiliation and physical punishment that was used during the imperial era. The wooden donkey was a device that resembled a sawhorse, with a sharp wooden ridge in the center that would press against the victim's perineum or genitals. The victim would be stripped naked and placed astride the wooden donkey, with their hands tied behind their back. The device was then raised off the ground, and the victim would be forced to balance on the sharp ridge while the weight of their body bore down upon it, causing extreme pain and discomfort. The punishment of riding the wooden donkey was often used as a means of punishing individuals accused of crimes such as adultery or prostitution. It was also used as a form of public humiliation, with the victim being paraded through the streets on the device as a warning to others. Number 7, Pair of Anguish The Pair of Anguish, also known as the Vichoke Pair, was a metal torture device that was commonly used during the medieval period, particularly in Europe, mainly for women. The pair of anguish consisted of a bulbous-shaped instrument with three or four metal leaves that could be separated by turning a screw, or key. The device was designed to be inserted into various orifices of the body, 
including the mouth, anus, or vagina. Once inserted, the screw or key would be turned, expanding the leaves and causing immense pain and discomfort. Different kinds were inserted into the vagina of a woman, or the mouth or throat of the person being tortured. Once inserted into the orifice of a person for abortion, witchery, miscarriage, homosexuality, adultery, blasphemy, lies, etc., to spread it open, tearing the muscles, causing permanent internal damage, or to dislocate or break jawbones. The pair of anguish was often used as a means of punishing and humiliating women accused of crimes such as witchcraft or adultery. It was also used as a means of extracting confessions or information from individuals. Number 6. Brazen Bull the brazen bull, also known as the bronze bull, or bull of phalaris, was a torture and execution device designed in ancient Greece. According to Diodorus Siculus, recounting the story in Bibliotheca Historica, Paralaws, or Perillus, of Athens invented and proposed it to phalaris, the tyrant of Acragas, Sicily, as a new means of executing criminals. The bull was said to be hollow and made entirely out of bronze with a door in one side. The condemned were locked inside the device, and a fire was set under it, heating the metal until the person inside was roasted to death. The head of the bull was designed with a system of tubes and stops so that the prisoner's screams were converted into sounds like the bellowing of an infuriated bull. Phalaris is said to have commanded that the bull be designed in such a way that its smoke rose in spicy clouds of incense. According to legend, when the bull was reopened after a body was charred, the victim scorched bones then, shone like jewels and were made into bracelets. According to legend, Phalaris ordered the construction of the brazen bull as a means of executing criminals and political dissidents. The brazen bull was considered one of the most gruesome and inhumane torture devices of its time, and its use was widely condemned. Despite this, the bull was reportedly used in several instances throughout history, including during the reign of the Roman Emperor Nero. Number 5. Head Crusher The head crusher was a torture device that was used during the early modern period, particularly in Europe, from the 16th to the 18th century. This metal device featured a plate that sat below the victim's jaw, which was connected by a frame to the head cap. As the torturer slowly twisted the handle, the gap between the head cap and plate decreased, crushing the skull, including the teeth, mandible and facial bones, and ultimately inducing death. Even if the torturer stopped before death, permanent damage to the facial muscles and structure would have occurred. The victim's head would slowly be crushed, killing the victim, but not before the victim's jaw had been crushed, and their eyes may have possibly extruded from their sockets. To aggravate the pain, the torture master would sometimes amuse himself by tapping on the metal cap with a small hammer. Some variations had a receptacle in the front to catch the eyes of the victim. The head crusher was primarily used as a means of extracting confessions or information from prisoners, although it was also used as a punishment for crimes such as treason, blasphemy, or heresy. The device was particularly popular during the Spanish Inquisition and was used to extract confessions from suspected heretics. The use of the head crusher declined in the late 18th century as the Enlightenment brought about a greater emphasis on humane treatment of prisoners and the abolition of torture. Today, the head crusher is considered a symbol of the barbaric and inhumane practices of the past. Number 4. Boot the term boot refers to a family of instruments of torture and interrogation variously designed to cause crushing injuries to the foot and or leg. The boot has taken many forms in various places and times. Common varieties include the Spanish boot, sometimes referred to as scar pines, and the Malay boot. The Spanish boot was an iron casing for the leg and foot. Wood or iron wedges were hammered in between the casing and the victim's flesh. A similar device, commonly referred to as a shin crusher, squeezed the calf between two curved iron plates, studded with spikes, teeth, and knobs, to fracture the tibia and fibula. The Malay boot figures prominently in the film China Seas, in which the protagonist, portrayed by Clark Gable, is subjected to this cruel torture. 
the instrument splints the foot and ankle between a pair of vertical boards made of strong wood or metal. The members are vaguely boot-shaped and completely enclose the prisoner's instep and toes. A crank is turned to close the uprights around the foot. Squeezing the entrapped foot to first grind the metatarsal heads together and eventually inflict sufficient pressure to shatter bones. In the film, Clark Gable's character is tortured while wearing a sock, in actuality, the torture was applied to the bare foot. Newer variants have included iron vices, sometimes armed with spikes, that squeezed feet and metal frames employed red hot. John Sproul is reported to have been tortured with two different boots. In general, the boot was a mechanically clever torture device and was widely employed throughout Europe to extract information. Number 3. Breast Ripper The Breast Ripper, also known as the Iron Spider or the Spanish Spider, was a torture device used during the Middle Ages and early modern period. It was primarily used to punish women accused of adultery, self-abortion, heresy, blasphemy and other crimes that were deemed as a threat to the social order. The instrument was designed to rip the breasts from a woman and was made from iron, which was usually heated. The breast ripper was often heated during torture. It contained four claws, which were used to slowly rip the breasts from women for various crimes. The instrument would be imposed onto a single breast of the woman. They were designed to shred or tear off the breasts of the victim. The device was designed to cause maximum pain while keeping the victim alive for as long as possible. The breast ripper was a horrific instrument of torture and a symbol of the brutal and inhumane practices of the past. It is important to remember these dark parts of history and to strive for a more just and humane society in the present and future. Number 2. Iron Chair An iron chair is a torture device that has several different variations depending on its origin and use throughout history. In all cases, the victim was seated on several strips or plates of brass and placed over an open flame and slowly roasted alive. In other variations, the victim was tied to an iron armchair and then slowly pushed nearer and nearer to a blazing fire. Other versions of the chair had the addition of small sharp spikes which lined the back, seat, armrests and leg rests. The number of spikes ranged from 500 to 1,500. Another variation of the iron chair was called the Chinese torture chair because it was a very common torture technique in China. Though the Chinese torture chair is slightly different it was used in the same psychological way as Europe's version. The Chinese torture chair was used in from 1701 to the 1900s in China and was made from wood with 12 steel blades in the arm, back and foot rests and seat. This device was used on convicted people or suspects because it instilled fear in a person. It was used to extract confessions from people by watching another get tortured. If that failed, the person themselves had to suffer from it as well. The iron chair was especially unique because it relied on the psychological effects rather than physical, unlike many other torture instruments. Physically, this instrument punctures the skin while the person is tied down tightly onto the chair. If they do not cooperate, the person gets tied down tighter, digging the spikes deeper into their flesh. The large hole at the bottom of the seat was made to put coal and fire under to burn the victim's lower body parts and slowly roast them alive. This torture technique did not necessarily cause death itself. It was usually followed with an infection after the person was released. Death was far from instant with the iron chair. Number 1. The Judas Cradle Judas Cradle was torture device, not designed to kill, but to inflict pain and humiliation. The Judas Cradle consisted of a pyramid-shaped stool made of wood or metal. The victim would be stripped naked and placed on top of the stool, with their hands tied behind their back. The torturer would then raise the victim by means of ropes or pulleys causing the sharp point of the stool to be forced into the victim's anus or vagina. The weight of the victim's body on the sharp point of the stool would cause intense pain and pressure, often leading to severe injuries and infections. The victim could be left on the Judas cradle for hours or even days at a time, depending on the severity of the punishment. Also, the device was rarely washed, causing life-threatening infections. 
The Judas Cradle was often used as a means of punishing individuals accused of crimes such as heresy or treason. It was also used as a means of extracting confessions or information from suspects. The Judas Cradle, also known as the a Spanish Donkey, was a torture device used during the medieval period. It was designed to cause extreme pain and discomfort, but was not necessarily intended to kill the victim. The physical conditions in which the victims were left from the cruel torture devices designed to cause huge pain would not only incapacitate them but also screamed of their criminal history, almost always, even if the crimes were as trivial as petty theft, or they were not criminals, at all, and yet were punished on the basis of just accusation, or for alternate sexuality. Though not a frequent happening, death occurred, too. If that didn't happen, the torturers and punishers made sure that these torture devices were supplemented with other forms of painful torture and humiliation. It is important to remember that the use of torture is now widely recognized as a violation of human rights and is prohibited by international law. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe this channel. See you next time.